good evening everybody we are meeting again in the session of organ of medicine we are discussing regarding the most practical part of the organ where anyone tried to explain all the auxiliary measures basically the role of diet and regimen he tried to explain over there and in last lecture we have finished three aphorisms 262 63 and 64 out of which in 262 and 263 has explained exactly about the what should be the diet you are going to advise specifically in acute disease. As in acute disease, there is no need to ask anything to the patient. The vital force is itself in a, such a strength that it, in the process of its recovery, it expects what it what which are the things which are needed for the body in the process of recovery and that's why generally the cravings which develop during acute state of disease they are according to the disorder according to the vital principle of that specific person and if he asks specific thing during that acute illness animal said there should not be any hindrances you provide it as it is and he asked all the attendants as well as the people who are there around him that don't avoid giving anything to them. Whatever they desire should be given. If they desire fanning should be provided. If they desire to keep the keep them clothes completely, it should be. So the things are not for the purpose of cure, but they are helps in the process of recovery for the vital force. And that's why accordingly the diet and regimen happens to be there. And this aspect he tried to explain over there in those two aphorisms. And one more aphorism, 264, where he has commented about the genuineness of the medicine. And the, my experience I have told, shared with you regarding the genuineness of the medicine, that yes, it is definitely one of the part in your practice. If your medicine is not genuine, even though your uh, similum of which you have worked out, it's correct, it never works. And that's why it is too important to have a genuine medicines with you in your clinic. And that's why I have suggested to all of you that if you are purchasing it, always purchase the packed sealed bottles from the company. That will be a better option or those with whom you are learning. If they are having their own medicines, you can share with them. My Many of my students, they share medicines from my clinic because they know the genuineness about it and I, I used to purchase it as directly from the company. So that's all we have discussed. Let us go ahead with the 265. We, we'll just read 265 and 266 in today's session. And then tomorrow we'll con continue with the 267. So what he says in 265? It should be a matter of conscience. Conscience is a very important word and conscience is there with each and every human being. Conscience is nothing but the inner mind. Conscience is nothing but the God inside the human being. The Satsad Vivek Buddhi. Upon Marathi, we can call them Satsad Vivek Buddhi. It should be a matter of conscience with him to be thoroughly convinced in every case that a patient always takes the right medicine and therefore he must give the patient the correctly chosen medicine prepared moreover by himself. And what he is explaining? The most important thing is the to find it out a right remedy for the patient. It should not be overlooked. There should not be any negligence on the part of the patient. Basically, one should think exactly, yes, this worked out very clearly, the right remedy of the patient. And if once you find it out a very perfect remedy for the patient, you give it in the proper dose. It should be provided in proper dose. And you should observe that it, if you are giving it, patient should follow it in a proper manner. So this is too important. And your thought always should be like that you, you are trying to cure your patient. Every patient you must examine thoroughly. You must find it out details about the patient, go into the psychodynamics of the patient, understand the patient and find it out the right remedy right for that patient. And it should be provided in right potency. The concern should be there in your mind that 
you are not doing any negligence on the part of patient. And this is too important. You must be very clear regarding your right. And this is what he wants to explain over there in that aphorism that it should be a matter of conscience with him. And that conscience should be there with each and every human being. Conscience is the most important nature of the human being. Always, Hanuman, in fact, I used to find it out that Hanuman was most conscientious person. He used to find it out fault with him, not with others. Even though, even he was while working on the chronic diseases, he worked out with the theory of chronic diseases where he has pointed out five points and all five points are nothing but the product of his own concerns. He pointed out what is wrong with me. He never pointed out what is wrong with others. And there are five points which he has explained are all related where is the fault inside him. That is what is concern. And concern is the most important entity when you deal with your patients. So Hanuman says over there, every homeopathic physician should have a concern to treat each and every patient in such a manner. So that is aphorism number 265. And then he turns towards the 266. And what he says? Substances belonging to the animal and vegetable kingdom possess their medicinal qualities most perfectly in the raw state. Here he turns to the pharmacy. The exact pharma pharmacy starts over here. And what he says over there, substances belonging to the animal and vegetable kingdom, there possesses their medicinal qualities most perfectly in their raw state. So whatever medicine you are collecting, there are certain qualities. For example, a simple example will take of only Onion has its, in raw state, you can find it out its own quality. Once you just uh, cut it, you get uh, discharges from your nose and eyes and it starts working. That is that is in raw state also, it, has, it shows certain medicinal quality. Mm -hmm. Depending on which you can find it out, this, med this can be a medicine, this can become a medicine. There are three important definitions. First is the drug, second is the medicine, and third is the remedy. Drug is the drug substance. Any substance which has the capacity to alter the human state of health is called as a drug substance. Any substance which has the capacity to alter the human state of health at the level of sensations and functions is called as a drug substance. When that drug is chosen, and they, they, when that drug has potentized and utilized on the in the uh, on the process of um, drug proving and find it out the qualities within that drug substance, it becomes a medicine. So, for example, we, onion is the drug substance. When it is potentized and proved, it becomes allium sipa. And when patient comes to you. With a typical features that there is a acrid coriza with blind lacrimation with a hay fever that happens to be there in the month of August and he's just dropping the water from the nose with lot of sneezing and rubbing the eyes and nose strongly, aggravated inside the room, emulated in open air, all those modalities where the LMCPA is presented. And when you prescribe that medicine, LMCPA to the patient, then it becomes a remedy. So this is the difference between drug, medicine, and remedy. The drug substance in crude form, it is a, which has the capacity to alter the is called as a drug substance. So what he says, there are many vegetable substances as well as the animal discharges or their products, which has a capacity in raw state to affect the human state of it. And there are many more. That's why he has written one footnote over there. We'll go to the, through that footnote where he has explained many, many things about the pharmacy. 142. All crude animal and vegetable substances have a greater or less amount of medicinal power and are capable of altering man's state of health, each in its own peculiar way. Those plants and animals used by the most enlightened nations, enlightened smajanani, Enlightened nations as a food have their advantage over all others that they contain larger amount of nutritious constituents 
and they differ from the others in, in these that their medicinal powers in their raw state are either not very great in themselves or are diminished by the culinary culinary processes. Culinary manje sahipaki sam sahipakacha sambandhi. Or are diminished by the culinary processes they are subjected to the in cooking for domestic use by the expiration of the pernicious juice like the cassava, uh, cassava root of South America by fermentation of the rye flour um, in the dough. Dough manje tin leli kanik kanik tin to na pan thala dough manje for making bread. Sauerkraut prepared without vinegar or pickled gherkins by smoking and by action of heat in boiling, stewing, toasting, roasting, roasting, baking, whereby the medicinal parts of many of these substances are in part destroyed and dissipated. So it happens quite commonly. We used to use the onion commonly, but we used to use the onion not in a raw form, but generally it has been used in a vegetable, preparing the vegetable. And that's why it never produces its direct effect, which it produces in crude form. There are many more. We used to use the ginger. We prepare medicine from ginger, gingiver. The, there is a you know, allium sativa, which is prepared from the allium uh, sativa. Lesson. This, uh, it is a very common common thing in our diet. Uh, uh, that is, these are the things which we used to use in our day-to-day -day life. But it never keeps its medicinal properties when used in our food. Because they are, their properties are lost during the process of cooking. And that's why they never shows a medicinal properties directly. But when you prepare it in the form, in the crude form or in the potentist form, the same substances used to work in, in many, many times in our day-to-day -day life for the purpose of um, uh, medicine. The tea we, we used to use, there is a medicine prepared from the tea is Thea, T-H-E-A. Then coffee, again, uh, many of people used to take coffee, but coffee do we prepare coffee and at day it becomes a medicine? So many food items which has a capacity to alter the human state of health work as a medicine. And those, when used in preparing preparing the food, loses their medicinal qualities because of the different different processes which are made during the process of cooking. What he says further by the addition of salt that is pickling and vinegar, sauces, salads, animal and vegetable substances certainly lose much of their injurious medicinal quality. But other disadvantages results from this addition. And many times we used to use salt in preparing many things. There are many people who used to add more salt. And those who used to add more salts generally affect because of the addition of the salt. There are many people who used to use the pickles in their daily diet and they used to crave for pickles like anti crude peoples, they, they craves the pickle. But many times that pickle creates a problem. Many people who used to use a more sauce in their diet used to suffer from it. So these are very important things which he tries to explain over there regarding the medicinal substances which loses their properties during the process of cooking but they are very good medicinal medicines in homeopathy when prepared according to the pharma pharmaceutical methods. In next paragraph, what he said, but even those, even those plants that possess most medicinal power lose that in part or completely by such processes. By perfect desiccation of all the roots of the various kinds of iris, of the horseradish, of the different species of arum, and the peonies lose almost all their medicinal virtue. Uh, desiccation. Desiccation it is a method of making it dry, process of drying up. Horse radish, it is a, um, it, uh, it is a, um, what you can say, 
इट इज जस्ट लाइक रेडिश इट इज तिखट मूल एक रोप है ऑल दो आर द मेडिसिनल प्लांट्स वेन दे यूज टू यूज इन दिन द प्रिपेरेशन ऑफ मेडिसिन बट वेन यू ट्राई टू यूज इट फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ युअर डाएट इट लूज इट्स मेडिसिनल वर्क द ज्यूस ऑफ द मोस्ट विरल पार्ट प्लांट्स ऑफन बिकम्स एन इनर्ड और पीच लाइक मास फ्रॉम द हिट एम्प्लॉइड in the pre preparing the ordinary extracts by merely standing a long time the expressed juice of the most deadly plant becomes quite powerless even at a moderate atmospheric temperature it rapidly takes on the vinous fermentation and thereby loses much of medicinal power and immediately thereafter the acetous acetous means acidic amla aslela and putrid fermentation whereby it is deprived of all its peculiar medicinal properties so he is explaining the pharmacy see how much thorough knowledge he was having regarding all the medicine and how to prepare because he himself has prepared and that because of which he know totally a pharmaceutical aspect about medicine so which medicines how it should be preserved otherwise it loses its medicinal strength all those things which he tries to explain over there and lastly he says the fecula fecula manje gadhul dalela fecula that is then deposited if well washed it's quite innocuous innocuous manje nirup dravi that's how it goes like ordinary starch by the transudation that takes place when number of green plants are laid one above the other the greatest part of the medicinal properties is lost so if you keep the medicinal plants over there one one on the another many a times it loses it discharges the uh, its own specific thing and because of which the discharge which comes out it loses the medicinal property so he tries to explain exactly how to preserve the medicinal plants he wants to explain exactly the if you are making the medicines from it you have to maintain their medicinal properties and which are the things which affects their quality medicinal quality those he has mentioned earlier so now he is turning to explain the pharmacy part of the in the organ of medicine and which is essential for the homeopath he should know how to prepare the medicines what has happened during hanemanian time there were no pharmacy so he has to prepare the medicine himself and there there are i have seen that there are many practitioners in foreign countries specifically i have seen the alice timerman she has her own pharmacy she used to prepare medicine according to the need of the patient so in their pharmacies they prepared medicine if patient she expects that patient requires the 42 potents we never get 42 potents we used to give 30 and we get the 200 because we purchase directly from pharmacy we don't have been between potents what do they do they i mean never prescribes it immediately they ask the patient that will prepare medicine for you and they prepare it for 42 and then they gives the 42 potency to the patient and because of which the homeopathic aggravation aggravation can be prevented hanuman used to do same thing in his practice he used to utilize medicine in the similar way and that's why he explained mm. over there the all the pharmaceutical procedures where one can lose the from medicinal properties of the drug substance and there should not be should not happen when you prepare the medicine so he turns towards the understanding and explanation of the pharmacy part uh, in this practical part of organ of medicine which is necessary one must know if any anyone shares or anyone ask you regarding how do you prepare your medicine all those things one must know for that purpose it is necessary to have some knowledge about the pharmacy that he has included in this uh, sixth edition of organ of medicine so i think we'll finish over here tomorrow we'll continue with the next aphorism we are on the path of completing this whole process of learning the sixth edition of organ of medicine through this commentary so this is too important for us in order to get a thorough scientific aspect which is explained by the animal in this sixth edition of organ of medicine so that's all for today if any query is there we'll have a chat otherwise we'll conclude the video 
Any Hello, question? sir. Yes. Yes, sir, I missed your last lecture, but just now at the starting of lecture, you said that uh, if there is any craving in acutes, uh, we should provide it. But if patient is suffering from cold and cough and uh, he or she is craving for ice cream, uh, it will increase uh, how my, to my do then. my suggestion you go through the last lecture again Okay, okay. it, it will be uploaded today night or tomorrow just go through that and still you have doubt we'll have a discussion Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you. there was one, there is one question by john david what all remedies we should think in peripheral arterial disease uh, john basically uh, one should not go with this specific action of the medicine. There are many more. It is not like that. You have to find it out the remedies which, which are there in the uh, which works on the venous system or arterial system. It's that's all. But that should not be a criteria when you prescribe. We should not think with the particular manner in specific uh, medicine. We have to understand every remedy by its score. Yes, there are many more. If you, if, for example, you will take alakasis is the remedy which works at the peripheral vascular system. The, there is a, another remedy, the phosphorus, which is also there. There are many more. But we shouldn't, we, our aspect is not look towards them with that angle only. Yes, that is one angle which one must understand the remedy. But there are many more. And that, that on the basis of which we are not going to prescribe, we are going to prescribe on the characteristic symptomatology of the patient, on the basis of which you select remedy. So, um, peripheral arterial disease, many, many, many more medicines are there in homeopathy. You, you have to find it out what, the, what is the symptom of the patient. For example, if he is having the gangrenous problem, what type of gangrene it is? What are the characteristic sensation? What is the location? What is the sensation? What is the modality? What is the concomitant? All things which you have to take into consideration while prescribing. And your remedy depends upon, not upon the peripheral artery disease, your remedy depends upon what it presents in that specific disease. So there are many more remedies and those varies from individual to individual. You have to understand them on the basis of patient symptomatology. Okay. Okay. So we'll conclude today's session. We'll meet tomorrow at the same time. Thank you very much for attending the session. Thanks a lot.